Tell your neighbor that go an extra mile. Say this year, go an extra mile. Say, do big things for God. This year. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, you are empowered in this season. Glory be to God. To go that extra mile. I was just uh, thinking about a, a certain man. This man, he is a friend, a dear friend. He started his journey working in a grinding mill. But he had a vision. But also, there was a spirit of excellence upon him. Although he was working in that grinding mill, God raised him up in a very significant way. And right now, he's one of the finest business people ever raised in this nation. In his mountain of culture, where he's operating and he's the leading business in this nation. But many people, they don't know that his journey, he started from just working in a grinding mill. But because he was an extra miler, doors opened for him. God was able to raise him up. So I believe some of you, you don't need to despise days of small beginnings. Don't despise where you are right now because you are on your way. You are invited to a walk of faith and you are invited to greatness by God himself. There is something about you. There is greatness in you. And God is inviting you into that dimension. Like this man, it was just by the lift of God, by the mighty hand of God, he was lifted up. Hallelujah. So the Lord who is the lifter of your head is lifting you in 2024. And you shall experience divine lifting in this season, in the mighty name of Jesus. I remember um, my wife telling this man to say, you know, Imagine if you were able to capture or get, uh, you know, um, get to record everything or just have mere pictures just to show your history. His story is so powerful and we're challenging him because he's a dear friend. We're challenging to write a book. And imagine if there was, you know, evidence, proof, pictures to sh really show that indeed he was raised from that place where he was hidden, concealed somewhere, but God lifted him up. Imagine, that would be powerful. I want to charge you, wherever you are, don't be ashamed. Get some good photos where you are. Because by tomorrow, this situation, where you are, the space that you are operating, the things that you are doing, they are going to be totally different. And if you are to tell your story, people will think that you are lying. So get some photos where you are staying, get some photos, whatever it is, it's small, but it will grow. Hallelujah. It will grow. Don't despise it. So get some photos so that your story, it will be a powerful story. Hallelujah. That's why we have got photos of how we started the journey. Praise be to God. So I challenge you to, because God is taking you somewhere. As long as you are an extra miler, God will take you there. Praise be to God. So, I want to challenge you and I want you to anticipate, to be expected that God is going to be lifting you up. Glory be to God. So, there's a scripture that is coming in my spirit. Proverbs 22, 29, I believe. It says, if you see a man who excels in his work, he will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. I think New King James Version says unknown men, but uh, King James Version says he will not stand before mean men. Hallelujah. So anyone who excels in his work, he will stand before significant people, he will stand before kings. Why? Because he's an extra miler. So because of that, he's ushered in, he's, he's lifted up, and he will stand before significant people. I decree upon you, you are going to be standing in in the presence of the great. Why? Because you are excelling in your work. Excel in your work. Hallelujah. Get to be exceptionally well in a certain thing. To athletes in a certain discipline. Get to excel. Master it. Be the best that there is in that discipline. 
where God has called you, try to put all your effort in there and do the, the best you can in that dimension. And that, it will cause you to be a shining star and all people will see the glory of God upon your life. Hallelujah. So, excel in that dimension or in, in whatever space God has called you into. Glory be to God. So now, let's talk about being empowered to be an extra miler or going an extra mile. So this principle, we are getting the key scripture from the powerful sermon that Jesus was preaching on the mount. And in there, he uttered certain things that were so powerful. And uh, I want to get from that and I want to extract something from there so that we get to establish this matter and we unlock uh, something. Hallelujah. But before I share from the scripture, I just want us to know that this principle of going an extra mile, it is a secret to success, success in life. If you want to be successful, if you want to see things happening in your life, get to understand the principle of the second mile. It will usher you in. Doors will open. Grace will come. Favor will come and you do significant things. So with that, let's open our Bibles in the book of Matthew 5, verse 41. Scripture says, And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Glory be to God. That was an amazing teaching. And uh, I want us to put an understanding because this statement, it was not a simple statement to people who were living under Roman Empire at that time because it was tough and I'll bring in understanding. But I want us to know and I want us to get this in our spirit that whatever Jesus teaches you, it is for your own blessing. It is to empower you. Hallelujah. So that's why Jesus Christ announced that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Anything that he wants to, trans he wants to give to you, whatever he transfers to you, whatever he teaches you, it means that his yoke is easy and his burden is very light. Hallelujah. So it implies that whatever he teaches, his teachings, the doctrine, his, his teachings are easy. They are to empower us. They are to cause us to experience success in our lives. We excel if we are to live by those teachings or principles. Hallelujah. I say this to say this, that Wrong teaching will always put you in bondage. Hallelujah. So, Jesus teaches something which is pure from the throne room of God. It is to liberate you. It is to empower you. It is to cause you to prosper. So, I extract something from Yeshua himself. So that you know that he's teaching this so that you and I, we are to prosper. Hallelujah. His teachings are so amazing. It, his teachings, they're always to liberate. You see in the Bible that his disciples, they started picking up corn on a Sabbath. But because they know that our teacher, the teachings of the, our rabbi are so powerful and we are not limited just like any other ordinary person. So they stepped out not out of arrogance, not out of rebellion, but out of revelation, because revelation allows you to enter certain dimensions. So because of the teachings, they, enter, they entered a certain dimension and they were picking up corn on a Sabbath. And when the Pharisees noticed that, they approached and they tried to challenge them and they said, why are you doing this? And it's a Sabbath. And Jesus was not even intimidated by that statement. He just looked back and say to them, have you not read? Have you not read? And he quoted from the word of God. So they were so much liberated. And we are living in an era where there is so much about law. Law is important to keep. Uh, doctrine is important to keep. But there is law of spirit of liberty. That we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. Not into bondage but into such a liberty 
that we can accomplish all that God has for us. Because there are certain things that you can see that they are a limitation. May you not be limited. May the Holy Spirit speak to you. May you be taught of the Lord so that there are no limits in your life. So let all limitation lines and anything that is a heavy load, a wrong doctrine, let it be taken away from you so that you access to the heavenlies. You access the real things, the anointing, the grace, the favor that God wants to give to you. Amen? Now, I feel good having established that. So, this was an amazing teaching by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's look into the meaning of this powerful principle so, so that you understand why I was bringing in that revelation just now. By law, a Roman citizen or soldier could compel a subject from one of the conquered lands to carry his backpack or his lord for him for one mile, but not more than one mile. So it was a law that would, you know, empower a soldier or a Roman citizen that if you are a foreigner, or you are part of the territory which they would have conquered, they can say, you know what, this is a heavy load for me. Can you carry this for me? By law, you were compelled to carry that load, but for a man, only one man. So it was a law. Hallelujah. So Jesus used this phrase as he was teaching powerful sermon on the mount. And he said, whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Now, can you imagine with me that bombshell? This must have been for those who were listening to this great sermon. Because they were under this oppression, under domination, and the rabbi, Yeshua, is saying, you know what? I've come and they are expecting that, oh, he's, he's, he's about to announce that you know what? Don't allow anyone to carry their stuff. Even one man, I suspend it. And I think that's the news that every church would want to hear, isn't it? That's a sermon that makes us get to be happy, to be excited. No, he didn't preach that sermon that day. He says, you know what? You have been told to go one mile, but I've come and I'm commanding you now that you go at least two. Imagine. You were thinking that he has come to take away everything and now it's my time of liberty. But no, his teaching is bringing so much liberty and he's wanting them to be very successful. He's setting them up for success. But it needed a mind of the spirit to understand where he was coming from. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So they were in a shock. The whole congregation was in a shock. Glory be to God. But we should not be in a shock when we hear the words of Jesus. Now, this is a powerful principle, saints. And I know that this principle, it works for those that are in business. This principle, it works for us who are in ministry, uh, for those that are athletes, uh, you know, almost every discipline. I think this principle, it works. Hallelujah. So I want to just pick on those that are athletes. An athlete who puts in time and effort in his training is more likely to succeed and excel in their discipline than someone who is just relaxed. We say, you know what, somebody laid hands on me and I'm going to make it. My church, there is a powerful anointing and I'm going to win that race. Most likely, yes, the pastor, the man of God is so powerful. Your prophet might be that powerful. But that anointing will not cause you to beat this man who has been putting in time, yes. exercising, yes. doing all that he has to do, yes. eating well, yes. disciplining himself, sleeping well. Yes. I'm telling you that that man, the hands might not need to be laid on that person. Man. Although anointing is very important, but discipline, it has got its own also place in our lives. Amen. That man, I tell you, you win the rest. Why? Because this man was just saying, you know what, by faith or by shouting seven hallelujahs, I'm going to win the rest, I'm going to win the rest, I'm going to win the rest seven times. <laughs> you 
I don't win the race, but someone who is putting in skill. What about a business person who is shouting in church services? I'm going to be the best business person. I'm going to be the best business person. Meanwhile, someone is going to conferences of business. Meanwhile, someone is actually uh, available at their workstation every day, putting in time, praying. But this one is just in church, just shouting seven hallelujahs, proclaiming, whatever, declaring. <laughs> These things are powerful. I think you are hearing my message. Don't stop doing these things. But after you have declared, after you have made those affirmations, powerful affirmations, discipline, now you apply yourself. Read a book. Find out about something. Read good financial books. Hallelujah. Not just to be all over the show. You might not be that champion that you are desiring to be. So, these principles are so powerful and they will cause us to be successful. Hallelujah. For you who are in the marketplace, those who have got a drive and a hunger to do more, do more than what is expected. And if you do that, you are most likely to excel in your business. Hallelujah. So you can do a little more. Spend a little time. There are people that I've seen in church, they are skilled to do with their hands. But you know what? Arrogance sometimes, and sometimes it's just not even arrogance, sometimes it's ignorance. They have not even approached anyone at all to say, you know what? I'm humbling myself and I'm wanting to understand you. I want just to learn. There are several people, many people who are saying, I don't have a job, but I don't get to see many people coming and say, you know what? I'm looking for a place that I can go and volunteer. Because I believe I've been called into accounts. Maybe I'm an engineer. But I don't have a job at the moment. But I want to be of use. And I want to learn. Can I find somewhere where I can volunteer? No, we don't get to do that. But someone will say, you know what? One day, one day it will happen. By faith and I claim it. I possess it. It's mine. No one. I bind this devil. Yes, the, the devil is, is a liar. In 2023, I was thinking I was going to make it, but he stopped me. But 2024, the devil is a liar. <laughs> no, he's not a liar. There's no devil in this, absolutely. He's not involved. Actually, the guy is saying, why are they always blaming me? His father was like this. His father was lazy. His mother was lazy. And they are saying they are Iniquities in the bloodline. I don't know what they are talking about. The iniquities in the bloodline. Maybe it's actually just we have inherited wrong habits from our from those that have gone ahead of us, and we are thinking that we are bewitched. No, just change your habits. Just have a different attitude, and you will begin to see you excel. Hallelujah. So don't stop. Don't wait for anything to happen to you. Be on the move. Do something. Many people are waiting for a job. Create your own. Do something. Volunteer. Do something and you see the Lord will take you from there. Hallelujah. But it requires a certain mindset. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So are you expecting this year that God will lift you? Let's not just say, oh, it's a year of open doors. Doors are opening for those that have taken time. They've made some investments. They've disciplined themselves. And now God can now usher them into those doors. Hallelujah. Now, the beauty about Jesus Christ, he would not teach something that he's not doing himself. And that should be the pressure that should be on every man of God, every pastor. Whatever you preach, you must put yourself under tremendous pressure that the word that you preach, it should also be a word that comes into your heart. Preaching is more like a double-edged sword. You are talking to somebody, you are helping someone, but it's coming back to you and it's helping you. And pastoral can be easy if you are practicing what you are preaching. It can be something beautiful. And it gives you longevity in ministry as well. 
Hallelujah. Because many frustrations, they will come because what you are saying, you don't even have faith in it. You don't apply it to yourself. So you can be frustrated and you say, this thing doesn't work. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. Glory be to God. So I declare, this is a year of faith with works. <laughs> Amen. That's a better word, isn't it? Faith with works. Not just having faith. Let, let us also have works. Say, here's my faith, but also here's my works. This is what God is doing. I'm doing something. Hallelujah. So let's check it out, what Jesus Christ was doing. Because he's the one who said, go an extra mile. Now, Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 38, scripture says, they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here, keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's where most of us are. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, basically, he's demonstrating this principle to us. So, in the passage that I've read to you, there are three groups of people that we can see, or at least that I can uh, extract from the scripture. The first group is all his disciples. And I think uh, it includes the, there were, I think, eight now, because one had, was on a mission to betray him. So eight of them, uh, he said, stay here. So there are people, the instruction is just sit here. And these people cannot do much. They just, they are told, sit. We are about to do some business. But the second group, he took Peter, James, and John. This is his inner circle. He takes them somewhere. And the instruction changes them because of their disposition and because of their mentality as well. Because this is the inner circle of Jesus. So he knows that they've got a capacity. He knows that they can stand for something. He knows that they can stand for, you know, a challenge, a, a trial. So he's taking them a little bit further than the eight. And he exposes them. So I want to challenge every business person, every leader, that in life you need to have your inner circle. There are certain people that you should take into certain dimensions. Not every, you should not take everyone to certain places where God is calling you into. There are only a few. So he takes three. These are his inner circle. You as a business person, who are your three people? Your James, John, and Peter. That you are saying, you know what, concerning this vision in this business or in this ministry, I'm wanting you to come with me and experience and understand and catch this vision. This is what we are about as a business. And you take them. You leave everyone else. Not that you don't love them, but you are exposing your inner circle so that at least they understand your mission. They, under they understand what you are about. So that if anything is to happen, if your boat is to crash, you step out of your boat and you walk on the water. Amen? And Peter was taught that lesson. That if anything is to happen, if your boat of business and if any, your ministry is to crash, I'm teaching you a higher dimension. Don't cry like everyone else that, you know, I'm shutting down. He says, step out of your boat and walk. That's what he said, bid me to come. And walk on the way to come. So there are certain people that you expose to that dimension that if anything is to happen, 
Just step out of your boat and walk. Amen? And he exposed these guys to that dimension. And the instruction was, keep watch. You coach them. You train them. There's a dimension of saying, I've been doing this, but now I'm exposing you to a higher dimension. You watch what I'm about to do. You watch what is about to happen here. And I'll allow you also to begin to demonstrate it and to do it. That's how we raise leaders. You model it. They watch you. Then you say, you do it. I watch you. Then you release them. And some of you, because you are doers, doers, they've got a problem. I'm a doer to a certain extent that we don't trust to delegate anything to people. We think that, you know what, we are the best and we can always do it. But your business is not going to grow if you are a doer. And if you keep doing. And I pray for grace for you as the doer that you need also to have grace to delegate. Trust that there are people that you can train and they can do. Anyone leading a department in your workplace, in your ministry, may you have leaders that are capable to train other leaders as well. That they will not only do the work themselves. Hallelujah. That's why I like Ephesians 4 verse 11. He has, when he accepted, he gave gifts to men. Some to be apostles, pastors, you know, this, the, the, the fivefold ministry. It says, for the perfection of the saints or for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. That's our assignment. That we raise people to do the work of ministry. Amen? So, I pray that also in, in business you take that model. That you raise people. That there are people that will do something. Anyway, the third group now, it's a one-man group. <laughs> That's where you should be found. The Bible says he went a little further on his own to pray. I've observed this. It's easy for us to call for a uh, corporate prayer meeting. And corporate prayer meetings are powerful. But you should not only be found or you should only not be known by God because of corporate prayer meetings. May he know you as a person that you go an extra mile. You, you do it like what Jesus Christ did. He, he, he even stepped out of the inner circle. And it's not comfortable to be vulnerable like that, to be on your own. But that's a place where God can do a work in you. So he stepped out of them. He says, I love you guys. You have been a support system. You have been doing things in my life, but I'm about to do business with my father in heaven. May you be found in a place where you do business with God this year. May he lift you in that place that you are alone with God. And you show you the mystery and the things that he has set aside for your business and for your assignment. He went a little bit further. Say after me, say he went a little bit further. So he went an extra mile. That's what he did. And in that, something powerful happened. And he was ready for the assignment. As you are taking a little step, going an extra mile, you are going to be empowered by God. That you come out of there. You are ready for the assignment. Say, bring on that assignment. And you say to your Judas, why are you delaying? Be quick to do whatever you want to do. I'm already ready for you. I'm already ready. Hallelujah. So, that's a place of an encounter with the Lord. If you go an extra mile. And I believe many of us, we are going to encounter God in that place of an extra mile. Put in some time, put in some time, put in some time. And God will do amazing things. Hallelujah. So, there's a dimension God is inviting you because he's wanting you to be alone. And in this dimension, they need, you must have boldness to be alone. And most people, they, they, they don't want to be alone because there's a misunderstanding that being alone is like loneliness. No. Being alone doesn't necessarily mean that there's loneliness. You can be alone but not be lonely. Why? Because if you are invited into this dimension, surely the Holy Spirit will be with you. And there is no way that you can be lonely in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can sense that I'm 
surrounded. And this is a better place than to be, most of you want to be surrounded by people, multitudes, but a better place is to be surrounded by Yeshua and by the presence of the Lord. Because in there, something great can come out of you. But if you are surrounded with the, the multitudes, the multitudes, they are always complaining. They are always telling you it cannot be done. They are always telling you it's, we are tired. They are always telling you it's time up. They are always telling you it's five o'clock. It's five o'clock. And it's a man who doesn't have a powerful vision. He tells everyone in the company, it's five o'clock and on the contract, it is written, I work from 8 a.m. and I finish at 5 p.m. And some of them at, at uh, 4, 4, 55. They are counting down. They cannot look at anything. They are watching because they are just wanting the bell to ring 5 p.m. And they just shout. And they are saying, I'm out of this place. I'm going. And it's time to. That's why you are where you are. There are people that have got a spirit. I call them worker of workers. Because that was the calling of Cain. A worker of work. There are people, they've got a worker mentality. They are not managerial in the way they think. No. They're always thinking, it's my lunch hour. It's time for tea. It's time for me to go. It's time for me. Even if they come early, they'll stop at the gate. It's not yet 8 a.m. I have to enter at 8 a.m. so that I clock my car. So they leave for their clock, clocking. But yet they come to church and they tell their pastors that they've got an assignment, that they are called to do significant things, and we don't know from where. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Him who hears, much will be given unto them. Even the revelation, even the understanding. With this understanding, God can say, if this one is working for, is faithful in this vision like this, surely if I give them their own vision, they will also be very faithful and they can be given a vision. Him who is faithful in another man's vision is also given something for themselves. Hallelujah. So I want you to begin to discipline themselves. But you say, you know what, I'm just working for this company. I'm I'm, I'm slaving for you. That is the mentality of the older son. Look, for these years I've been slaving for you, but the father says, anything was availed at you. I thought you were not a slave. But that's what he was seeing. Let's change the way we see things. Let's have eyes that can see into the spiritual, that we can see something far and we can bring it into now so that we can also hasten, quicken, our promotions. Hallelujah. So, begin to change certain things and you see powerful doors will be opened for you and you can step into You who are business owners, you know what I'm talking about. You want to say, sister, can you just help me with a little, just, I need these figures now. They'll tell you, boss, it's five o'clock. Don't you see? Do you have a watch, boss? Or some of them, they buy a big clock so that when you say, can you give me that report? They'll say, boss, time. And in there, you miss your promotion. Just like that. And you come to church, you say, there is a demon on me. There is no demon on you. You are not just well taught. And you, just, you are not well coached. That's all. And I've got some people here, they started businesses. And because of the mentality, one of them is just seated in front. I just want to, I'm, I'm just covering him. I don't, he was now a big boss. He started his company. He was sleeping and you wake up at 11 a.m. Then you know Apostle Nyara. She approached him. He said, what's up? Why are you? He says, I know I've got someone who is doing my business and I just go and check. And thank God for wonderful sons. If you correct them, they are quick to repent. He went into his business and all of a sudden, he's flourishing. He's making it. Something powerful is happening. Why? Because your business responds when you are present. You are not just merely physically present. You are oozing a fragrance. You are releasing a grace in your own business so that people, deals, are attracted 
because of your presence. He has went on to launch, I think, two, two products. Two products from knowing. Hallelujah. Just, just by this principle. Yes, let's give, him, let's give the Lord a clap offering. So I pray that the doors that we are crying for, these are the principles that we need to live by. Amen? And something, God will do something great. And it is our desire that every one of us will do great things in this year. Hallelujah. That significant doors will open. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So in this place where you are on your own, you are alone with God, that's where something happens, where it opens your eyes and it shifts things. Hallelujah. In this place of being alone, that's where you ascend. Say, in my place of being alone, that's where I'm going to ascend this year. Hallelujah. So that's why he's wanting you, not your inner circle. You, not your husband. You, not your spouse. You, not your children. You, and not your intercessors. And he wants to do something so that he shifts you. You ascend into a certain realm. May you ascend this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this place, many are not able to dwell in this realm. Why? Because you pay a price to ascend. Tell your neighbor, pay a price, brother. You can see even their disposition. Say, are we in church today? Yes, we are in church. As much as, you know, all these years, we've been prophesying, but nothing. But now we have to go for principles. So that we see something powerful happens to you. So you pay a price to ascend. In this place, your friends, they can sleep on you. People can leave you. You can be misunderstood as a business person, as a pastor, as a leader, as a family man. That's the price that you have to pay. People can sleep on you. His inner circle, they could not be available at the, the most critical time that he needed them the most. Why? Because you have to pay a price. Hallelujah. You can be overwhelmed as you choose this way. But stay in there as part of the process. Hallelujah. That's the transition process. You are taking yourself out of the multitudes. Because if you are not careful, we will only be known among the multitudes all our life. But that's not the call of God upon your life. God wants to transition you. And when that happens, when this process is taking place, usually people, they, they are very few, very few. I think worldwide, only 101% live in the extra mile dimension. That's why there are few very successful people because they're dead. They are willing to pay the price. Because in this process of transition, you lose your mind. Your mind begins to fail. Hallelujah. That's why now you begin to have emotional intelligence. Self-management is very key. Because self-management is one of the components of emotional intelligence. That you know that there's something up here. I remember the first time that I gave a time, I was fired at my workplace. And I said, wow, this is amazing. But I didn't fail. My mind didn't fail in that transition because I said, if the, the enemy is so much interested in this principle, I want to discover more. And I went on to dig in. And up to now, I live by that principle and I live on my time. Hallelujah. Not because Malachi taught it. No, I don't live it by Malachi principle because he's not my father. Malachi was, is not my father in faith. Abraham is my father in faith. He was the one who went an extra man and he is extracted a principle that was to come in 400 years time. He was already doing it. Those are extra milers. Before it becomes a law, before it is instituted, there are certain breed of people that by the spirit, they just get it. They, they, they get it by the spirit. And everyone else will come on board. Why? Because it's now announced it's available to everyone. These are the Abrahams. 
a certain people, certain breed, that they are set aside for certain revelations. And because of that, they excel in life. May you avail yourself that God gives you certain revelations that out of those places of being alone, oh my goodness, something beautiful, something of God will come out of them. And some of you, I'm believing you that in this service you go an extra mile. Because all you can pay attention is 30 minutes. But today, may you, with the help of God, may I challenge you just go to about 40 minutes. If you are to take 40 minutes. That you start practicing it. That you know what? I'm disciplined. And I'll be listening. And I'll be following the message. I'll let. And you begin to challenge yourself. How about reading your Bible? Some of you, you cannot read one chapter a day. How about starting two chapters today? You go an extra mile. Start right away. Am I speaking to somebody today? Amen? You start to apply the principle right away. Hallelujah. So if your mind wants to fail, it wants to say, ah, it's, this is too much reading. Hey, you are, you emotional intelligence rise from within. You, the self-management, discipline yourself. Say, I'm going to do it anyway. And I will not be dying. And you will not die. Glory be to God. Are you getting something today? Yes. Glory be to God. Say, I'm enjoying the word. Actually, say, I'm awake this year. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This year, go an extra mile. Don't sleep in church. Go an extra mile. You will be allowed to get some spiritual things. And God will work with you this year. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you, to me, this is Jesus, but I want someone, I, I've seen it, this is Jesus, and we can say, oh, the Jesus, you know, uh, this one, we cannot compete with him. So I want also to look to a man just like us. So I'm, I'm wanting to extract something from Genesis, Genesis 24, verses 14 to 19. This is so powerful. Scripture says, May it be that when I say to a young woman, this is after Abraham has sent uh, his servant, he said, go and get a wife, a good wife for my son Isaac. Don't just get anyone. Amen? And this man went also an extra man. He could have said, you know what, I will just go. It's a simple assignment and I'll do whatever. It, uh, if it fails, it fails. But he says, no, I'll go an extra man. I'll also go into prayer. I'll do whatever it takes so that I get the right candidate for my master's son. Go an extra mile. And his assignment was a success. Now he says, may it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Imagine having a worker like this in your company. You do much. Imagine having a deacon in your church like this. Imagine having pastors like this. And we do have deacons like this. We do have pastors like this. I've seen it. We do have actually members like this. Imagine. This is powerful. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before, just imagine how quick God responds if you, are, you go by this principle. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with a jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethel, the son of Milka, who was the wife of Abraham's brother, Nahor. The woman was very beautiful. Huh, a virgin. No one had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled a jar, and came up again. She, she doesn't know what, what is happening. Some of you, you are busy doing something God is interested in, is looking. And because of your diligence and your faithfulness and the spirit of excellence upon you, God is about to cause you to stand out. He's about to expose you. So, she filled a jar, came up again. Then the servant hurried to meet her and said, please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my Lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar 
to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, now she's not even asked about camels. She said, I will draw water for your camels too until they had enough to drink. Wow. There we go. She went an extra mile. Praise be to God. So, Rebecca demonstrated this powerful principle. She gave water to Abraham's servant and went on to draw water for 10 camels. Can you do that for your boss? Can you do this for Jesus? Can you do this for your family? Can you do this for your company? I pray that we'll do this because this is key for doors to open this year. Hallelujah. Now, watch this now. Pay attention. Look up. It is said a typical camel can drink up to 50 gallons of water, which is equivalent to 200 liters of water. One camel, 200 liters. So she drew 2,000 liters. That's more like a bowser, isn't it? Of water. Imagine the effort. She spent all her energy doing that. And watch this. Because some of you, you think maybe there's a horse pipe. She's just putting this thing and she's pumping. Even with a with horse pipe, some of you, you not even do it. Amen? You say, ah, you know what? You know. But watch this. She's using a, almost like a 20 liter bucket. So how many trips is she doing up and down, up and down? How many times to you who are mathematicians? Hallelujah. About 100 times going up, going down, going up, going down, going up, going down. Some of you say, hey, this service is too long. Hey, I should have knocked off at 5 o'clock and it's still 8 o'clock and we haven't finished. Some of you said, I've, I've suffered enough for this family. Ah, it's enough now. Hey, they're calling for another prayer meeting. Hey, there's another training meeting. I'm not going. But Rebecca, because she's the deep calls unto deep, she's called into a higher dimension. She just knows within her spirit. She's no candidate of mere man. Like I said, a man who excels in his work will not stand before mean men, but he will be in the presence of kings. She's called to marry a patriarch. The patriarch is Isaac. So she demonstrates that she's ready to operate in a palace. She's not like any other girl. That's why this assignment had a condition to it. Because she was to be, she was to stand out. I decree and declare that in this season you are, you are called into a higher dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Because where God is calling you into, you are called into a realm where kings are going to be in your presence. So he's training you. And let not your mind fail. Hey, hundred times. <sighs> Fainting. No. She, she did it. And she finished. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you getting something today? So watch this. This was not just a scenario where one is found in a right place at the right time. It needed an extra miler as well. Some of you, really, you are in a right place at the right time. But there's one thing missing. You are not an extra miler. So you cannot see. You say, you know, I'm in a right church. I'm in a, with the right man of God. I'm in a right company. And the, I'm always in the right place, the right time. But something is happening. To this year, 2024, begin to be an extra mile. Because that's the key that will open doors for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So everything is going to be unlocked. Because you're an extra mile. Glory. My sister, that's why I was saying, come. And thank God you came. There is promotion that is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are about to be restored. God is with you. God is going to increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of your 
obedience, may you receive much from the Lord. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, a principle of going an extra mile opened a great door for Rebecca. I decree that also it is going to open a great door for you this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's your season, it's your day, it's your hour of visitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And when that time comes, may you be found to be going an extra mile. May you be found to be doing the right thing. May you be found to be on your post. May you be found to be working on your vision. May you be found working on your dream. May you be found working on that vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Stay, 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 stay stay after having done to stand 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 in the name of Jesus Christ he's about to come and reward you in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare that you are not going to be like a soul who say I've been waiting I've been waiting and it's time that I offer the sacrifice now no keep waiting keep working keep working keep working in the name of Jesus him who rewards you is about to reward you in the name of Jesus he's a rewarder of those who are diligent who diligently seek him have you been been seeking the Lord diligently, you are about to be rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm asking a question. Have you been diligently seeking the Lord? You are about to be rewarded. The time of re being rewarded is about to come right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear the sound of a chariot coming to take you, to transition you into the palace right now. Your promotion is now because you have been faithful and you have been diligent. Give him a clap offering. Thank the Lord that is about to do something significant in your life. Come on, thank the Lord. Come, thank, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of those who are diligent in seeking His face. And some of you have been seeking the Lord in the night, waking up, praying, 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 fasting, reading the word, reading the word, coming to church services, coming to meetings. You are about to be rewarded now in the name of Jesus. You are about to see great doors open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's your time. It's your season. You have been giving and giving and giving and giving. God is now lifting you up. God is now lifting you up. You are lifted up by the Spirit of the Lord. Your head is lifted up. The lifter of your head is working in you right now in Jesus mighty name. You might not be seeing anything yet. You wait and see. In March you are about to see what the Lord has been planning and has been doing behind the scenes in the name of Jesus Christ. His hand is stretched forth right now and you are picked from that place in Jesus mighty name and he's placing you on a solid ground. Your business solid ground. Your ministry solid ground. Your marriage solid ground. Why? Because you have been faithful and you have been diligent. Give him a clap offering and thank the Lord for what he's about to do in your life. Great doors. Sit down. So I believe it's not a difficult thing for God to open a door for you. The issue is, are you positioned to seize the opportunity? Are you willing to expend your energy working tirelessly to get the job done? If you are doing that, you will see the reward from the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for every Rebecca in the name of Jesus Christ that your reward is coming. You are about to be greatly rewarded in the name of Jesus Christ. The door has been opened for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Genesis. Genesis. I give you another person who went an extra mile because a matter should be established with at least two or three witnesses. Genesis 39, verses 20 to 22, scripture says, Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison, whatever they did, it was his doing. <laughs> Extra milers, it doesn't matter where, where life throws you or whatever is thrown at you in life. If you are an extra man, God is with you. It's, it's an amazing statement to say he was in a prison and God was with him in the prison. So I don't know, maybe some of you, you are in a prison, but God is with you. God is with you. 
and is interested what you are going to be doing in that place where you are most likely to be bitter, angry, screaming, shouting at everyone, is interested. How will you respond? And your response is key in terms of doors opening for you. Very key. Some of you, you are, you are, you are responding, you are not reacting. Many Christians, they, they've not been taught how to respond, but they only know how to react. These are two different things. Many people, they react. And when you react, you can mess up the plan of heaven. May you not mess up the plan of heaven. I said, may you not mess up the plan of heaven. Your prophecy, your vision, it will come to pass. But don't mess it up. Now, let's continue to see. We flip over to the next chapter, Genesis 40. Let's watch this man from verses 1 to 7. It came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of, and the, baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in the custard, in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he saved them. So they were in custard for a while. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison had a dream a dream both of them each a man's dream in one night and each man's dream with its own interpretation and Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad so he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custard of the Lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? Why is someone in this place monitoring people's countenances that is able to pick it that this person is not happy today? It's his attitude. This man has a winning mentality. He's in a place where People, generally, they don't care. They are upset. They are angry. But he takes time. He looks and says, no, this man, there is something wrong with him. The face is sad. They are not the same men that I know. So he was paying attention. As much as he was doing all his duties well, he was also interested in the warfare, welfare of the, those that he was looking after. It was going an extra mile. Amen? He was doing that. Hallelujah. So watch what happens when favor, discipline, and self-mastery is backed up by this principle of going an extra mile. Something powerful happens. Joseph was promoted because of this principle. Hallelujah. Joseph was not just doing his job, taking care of king's prisoners. He was interested in their welfare, like I said. Their well-being. He was interested. He was concerned when he, was, he noticed that they had sad faces. So Joseph's willingness to go an extra mile was key for his ascension. As, this, as much as this year is your year of ascension, your willingness to go an extra mile is key for that ascension. For your promotion, go an extra mile. The chief butler was the master key. We, we spoke about the master key in the word for 2024. So the master key that you might need to open the door of your promotion, it might be a person that you are going to be serving. As you go an extra mile, serving someone that someone when he comes out of their predicament they are going to remember you and they are the one that are going to open the palace door for you and you'll be ushered into a place of greatness because of your attitude 
because of your disposition of going an extra mile. Hallelujah. So, who is your master key? You don't know. None of us. So, what do we do? In whatever circumstances we are found, let's just go all, all the way. Let's go an extra mile. And in there, you unlock a blessing. Because who knows? You might be helping the chief butler. And the chief butler is connected to a pharaoh. And a pharaoh can give you a seed. A seed that can change your life forever. Not only your life, but everyone, even your siblings, they can be sustained by the seed, by that seed that Pharaoh can offer you. And you can preserve posterity that way, that they will not die because of hunger, because of you going an extra mile. That even your father will call everyone to say, let's go to Egypt, because there is a Joseph. And why should we die here? And many of you, your families are going to be saved in that way. Because you are an extra man. Look for that master key. Save that person. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, can I talk a little bit about those that are called into ministry? Ministry work, it requires us to go an extra man. Certain people, they see us preaching on like what I'm doing right now. And they think that this is ministry. No, this is 10% of ministry. Hallelujah. There are many things that we do outside preaching. So I want to talk to those that are called into ministry and to, that are called into priesthood in terms of being in the house of Jehovah. Now, I want us to get this principle from Stephen and Philip who were deacons ordained to serve on the temples, but they went an extra mile in their service to the Lord. And these two gentlemen, they, they did something great. And I believe also in this house, we have people that are going to do significant things. And I'll close with this one. And as I close, I believe heaven will release certain things upon our business people, upon our women, the Rebecca's, release those that are called to lead in this nation and in the nations that they'll pay the price you'll release that grace you release also the Stevens and the Phillips of this generation get ready for that hallelujah so x6 verses 8 to 12 scripture says and Stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and signs among the people. Then, then, then there arose some of what is called the synagogue of freed men. The synagogue of the freed men. Syrian. Alexandrians. And those from Cilicia and Asia. Disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men. Always when you are now lifted up, when there's divine lifting, there are people who are induced to work against you. But the power and the grace and the anointing upon your life will keep you and will sustain you. They secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. But the man was not moved. If you continue to read, as they were stoning him now, they ended up stoning him. They promoted him so much that he was not feeling the pain. He was not realizing what they were doing. And it was not affecting him. He saw the heavens open. And he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord God. Yahweh seated in the midst of that. But this man, he was an extra man. His duty was just to save on the tables. But he says, no. I'm going to take it a little bit further. And the way that he was saving. And for scripture to describe him that is a man full of faith and mighty works. 
they, they did great things in the kingdom of God. They didn't just remain in, on, in terms of serving on the tables. No. They now were doing work of apostles. What apostles were meant to do, they were now doing. And I pray that you don't need to wait for a, a title to be conferred upon you. Whatever you have right now, because you're an extra man, don't just limit yourself just because you're a deacon. Go on. Go on and do things that people will gather and they will be just men. And they'll say, how can we stop this one? But you cannot be stopped. Because why? There's something in your spirit that tells you that I can do more for my God. I can save more. I can accomplish more. I can go out there, win lost souls. I can go out there, and heal the sick. I can go out there and bring in the lost in the kingdom of God. I can go out there and encourage people. I can go out there and be used of God significantly. May that be your portion. Hallelujah. Now let's look at his friend. Acts 8, 38 to 40. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch, watch, is now working with the kings. The eunuch is now dealing, because he says, I'm not just a deacon. I'm going to go an extra mile. So he's now ushered. A man who excels in his work will, will stand before kings. There we go. Proverbs 22, 20, 29. He's there standing with a someone with authority. And the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, when they came out, up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way. But Philip was found in Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. <laughs> Imagine, the guy was just going, but he was just simply a deacon. But because he was an extra miler, he says, you know what? I'm not just an usher. I'm not just a keyboardist. I'm not just someone who is serving in eaglets. No, there's something. God is calling me into a higher dimension. I'm not just welcoming people to church. I'm called to a higher dimension. And I'll go all the way. And in you going all the way doing exploits, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon you and transport you and take you into a certain place. And by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you are preaching the gospel. You are turning cities upside down. And you are waking things. And you are doing wonders. And miracles are following the preaching of the gospel. And you are used effectively. That your prayer is backed up by heaven. Whatever you are doing, families are liberated. People are liberated. Regions are liberated even from demonic oppression and demonic powers. But you are simply a deacon. But you have taken upon yourself that, Lord, I'm available. Lord, use me. Lord, empower me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, cause me to be able. Give me an ability that I can go out there and, and, and make me your soldier. Make me win souls for you. Make me your champion, Lord God. Use me, oh God. Do something with my life. Let me not just remain a person that I am. Do something something upon my life. Do something. Change me. Transform me. Empower me, Lord God. Give me a fresh anointing. Let the oil run also on my head. Let me be lifted up. If you are to be lifting someone this year, may I also be lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that in churches right now, we have got leaders that are being lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not be worried about titles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, but they are just servants of the Lord. That they are just a available to be used by their God, used by their Father. They will allow the anointing of God. They will allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in them, to rest upon them mightily and to be used in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare upon your life that the hand of the Lord is upon you as much as the hand of the Lord was upon Philip in the name of Jesus, in our generation, in our day. I decree and declare that the hand of the Lord is upon you and is about to release you, is about to do wonders with you in Jesus mighty name may you become a miracle worker may you 
do miracles, may you do wonders in your community. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are released to win souls. Every limitation is broken. Any fear is broken in Jesus' mighty name. And you do significant things for God. You will be, it will be said of you, those who have turned the world upside down, they have come here also. And because you are sold out and you desire, say, Lord, pour your spirit. Lord, pour your anointing. Lord, pour your grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you hunger and thirsty for righteousness and thirsty for the things of God, you shall be sustained in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who is hungry in this service for God and to be used by God, I want you just to cry out or say, Oh Lord, let me drink from your brook. Let me drink from your spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on, ask him to fill you. Ask him to anoint you, a fresh anointing resting upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Just cry out, just cry out that Lord, I want to do more. I want to do more. Even my preaching, I want to do more. Give me nations, give me nations. I carry nations within me in the mighty name of Jesus. Usher me into that dimension that many they shall know you through me in the name of Jesus. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, anoint me. Lord, empower me. Come on, everybody. Just just begin to cry out there's an anointing here there's an anointing even for soul winners in this place in the name of jesus christ he who wins souls is wise by the anointing of god go out and win souls go out and win souls in the name of jesus christ you will be anointed you will be anointed as you go you are going to be anointed as you go in jesus mighty name fear will go in jesus mighty name the time for fear to go is now in the name of jesus christ break free right now no limitations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this is the hour, this is the season that you are going to save your God. The hour is now, the time is now. Come on, just pray. I know I've got a few people that I can say, I'm here also to stand. Begin to pray, begin to cry out that God anoint me. Lord, anoint my spirit. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint my head. Lift me up, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the anointing, for the coronation of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you that you are lifting us up. That divine lifting, Lord God, is coming because we are extra miles. We go an extra mile in Jesus' mighty name. These are our examples. Stephen is my example. Philip is my example. Rebecca is my example. Jesus is my example. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'll go an extra mile. Joseph is my example. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, lift me up. Lift me up. Lift me up, Lord. Lift me up, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In business, lift me up. In ministry, lift me up. In my family, lift me up. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Thank you for joining us. We trust that you have been blessed. Stay connected and subscribed to our social media platforms. That is Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Eagle Vision Church. For all those who wish to partner with us, by giving. These are our official accounts as a ministry. For all those who wish to give from abroad, kindly find our multi-currency direct pay online link in the description. For those giving locally, that is within Zimbabwe, using EcoCash, our short code is star 151 star 2 star 5 star 293961 star amount Hush. For either RTGS or USD bank transfers, we have FBC, Ecobank and Stanbic accounts. For more information about us, please visit our website at www.eaglevisionchurch.co.zw or email us on info at eaglevisionchurch.co.zw.